Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, soccer fans of all ages, this is Armand Colombo Field at Marciano Stadium, home of your Brockton Boxers. And today, it's the second game of the season as the Cougars of Notre Dame Academy come to town to face the Owen One Boxers. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, bringing you all the action high atop Colombo Field, and there should be plenty of it tonight. In talking to head coach Denise Glennon before the game, we learned a few things. First off, she's a New York Giants fan. We'll let that slide. Second, she's expecting a very, very better showing from the boxers than the last game against Oliver Ames. A few different formations they worked out in practice, sliding someone up from midfield to play forward, go attack heavy. The big story for the boxers, Janae Demanche Silva out with a sprained ankle tonight. She is one of their starting front midfielders for the boxers, and she finds herself on the injury list tonight. Notre Dame is wearing their away blue jerseys, white and gold trim, the boxers. White jerseys, red and black trim. And the Cougars are already pressuring in the boxers defensive zone. This one picked up and have to apologize for the last three, two and a half to three years we've been mispronouncing the starting goaltenders of the boxer's name incorrectly. The Mad Dog research team has found out that it is Tori Viola Lothery, not Viola Laffery. So we have stoppage and Notre Dame will have a free kick deep in their own territory. This one going to be kicked off by Maggie Lothnane, number four for the Cougars. Jayla Smith sending it to midfield for Kayla Murphy, who has taken the number of Gabby Del Pico. This one sent back across midfield by Viola Lothary. Now Denel Davids sending this one forward. Notre Dame, a very fast team. And showing that early, if they play it correctly, and they do, it's a 2 on oh for the Cougars. Number seven alone, her weak shot is going to be picked up by Viola Lothary. That is Ellie Tucker on the attempt for the Cougars. This one sent ahead by Murphy into the Cougars defense. Now an opportunity for the boxers. This one sent across the goal line and it'll be a corner kick for Brockton, their first of the game. 36 minutes to go in the first half. Of course, two 40-minute halves, no stoppage time at the end of the first half. That is added on to the end of the game. Sent in Murphy, almost getting her head on it, but Notre Dame able to clear out. Now speeding ahead is Catherine Shaw. Shaw sending it over the middle. For number 22, Shannon Lavangi. Lavangi back for Shaw. Out of bounds. Notre Dame throwing. Jayla Curran-Stewart 
sending this one in to Kayla Murphy. This one sent ahead intended for Kyla Colors. Just a little bit too far ahead. Out of bounds off of Notre Dame. Deflected shot. And this one's going to roll out of bounds. This one picked up by Haley Roberts. And the short kick is taken right back by number seven of the boxers, Karen Stewart. Notre Dame sending this one ahead. No offsides whistled, and now Brockton having to defend another opportunity. This one sent across the box, headed back into the middle, and there's no Cougar there. And Brockton's able to clear out at least momentarily. And this one's going to be whistled off sides against Notre Dame. So Brockton free kick from about the four yard line. Very short kick and it rolls back towards Viola Lothary. Notre Dame displaying impressive speed up front, leading to a few opportunities that have so far all been stopped by the senior goaltender for the boxers. Eight minutes into the first half, 32 and a half minutes to go. Still scoreless between the Notre Dame Cougars and the Brockton Boxers. in with some room and it's going to be sent back towards midfield by the Cougars. Kayla Murphy fighting for it and she has it. Her cross attempt is going to go deeper into Cougar territory but eventually cleared out of bounds by the back line of Notre Dame. Perfect night for soccer here at Brockton High School. It is 75 degrees with just a slight breeze coming out of the west. Gusts up to three and a half miles an hour. Sunny, not a cloud in the sky. As the sun has begun to set here in Brockton. An opportunity, a shot. And this one's fired over the top of the net by number 25. And Anna, excuse me, Anna Bertarelli. Megan Ortendahl coming into the game. 
She replaces Jayla Smith. This one off of the torso of number 13, Vanessa Dos Anjos. Now Dos Anjos has it and has it taken away by the Cougars. Now Ortendahl sending it ahead. This is Cardozo into the corner for number 24, Serena De Silva. De Silva in the corner, back to Cardozo into the middle and it's broken up yet again by the Cougars. Smith ahead for Madison Hendrigan. Hendrigan's shot finds Haley Roberts and the goalkeeper for the Cougars sends it back towards midfield. Penalty against the boxers. Free kick inside midfield for Notre Dame. Be taken by number four, Maggie Lofnane. Sophomore out of Milton. No Brockton residents on the private school roster of Notre Dame Academy in Hingham. I like the fact that on the Notre Dame roster, it lists the hometown of each player. And one, just one sticks out to me. And that would be senior midfielder, Derek Walter, who goes, travels to Hingham from Sagamore Beach. Quite the trek five days a week. Now it's a breakaway for the Cougars in a foot race. Number seven for the Cougars winning that. Her shot is going to be picked up by Tori Viola Lothery. That was Catherine Shaw on the attempt for the Cougars. Karen Stewart back into the game. <laughs> Big week here at Marciano Stadium for Boxer Athletics. Of course, this Friday evening, the home opener for the Boxer football team is the Wildcats of Weymouth come to town. Quick reminder. Fill the stands because last season's game between those two teams ended in overtime on a 98-yard. That's right. I said 98-yard blocked extra point attempt. Walk-off win for the boxers. Of course, Brockton suffering a 42-28 defeat at Lexington High School this past Saturday. They almost, they almost made the comeback. They almost did it. It was 28 to nothing. 28 to nothing. And 
and the boxers made it all the way to 28 21 and then Lexington scored again 35 21 35 28 42 28 final and again we would like to take this opportunity to remind you that the Falcons blew a 28 to 3 lead in the Super Bowl as this one finds its way out of bounds north of the Broughton bench a couple of substitutions numbers two and three into the game for Brockton Olivia Shaw and Lena Marion Twenty-four minutes to go now in the first half. Still scoreless between the Cougars and the Boxers. Brockton definitely early in the season feeling the ill effects of losing their 30 goal scorer Gabby Del Pico who as a sophomore has committed to Harvard and Harvard told her you have to play for a club team called Developmental Academy and they've told her that she cannot play for her high school team. It's a little bit of a chain reaction and Brockton feeling the ill effects of that. Serena De Silva on the far side, sending it out of bounds off of one of the Cougars. This one popped ahead, and Notre Dame might have another opportunity. It is Shaw again in alone, and she gets around Viola Lathery, who makes the diving save and picks up the ball right off of the foot of Catherine Shaw and Brockton. Quite literally escaping one there. We check out a quick replay. Shaw getting behind the boxer's line. Viola Lothary making a fantastic initial save. An excellent awareness to completely spin around while on the ground and dive on top of the loose garbage in front. Brockton's got to be careful or suffer another defensive breakdown. And here's another opportunity, and this one is going to be sent wide of the net for a goal kick for the Boxers. Cardozo sending this one up. Brockton bunching up around the ball in the defensive end, and that is not a good thing. This one's going to be offsides against the Cougars at about the 20-yard line. Of course, in addition to the Boxer Football Home Opener this weekend, also the annual Greek Festival at the Annunciation Church over on Oak Street. And another opportunity for the Cougars. 
A shot and a save by Viola Lothary. Number 25, Anna Bertarelli, the sophomore out of Bridgewater with the latest Cougar opportunity. Couple of substitutions, but yeah, the Greek Fest this weekend, Annunciation Church over on Oak Street. Couple of personal favorites, Pasticcio and Lucumades. For those of you who don't understand Greek, fried dough in the form of like a munchkin, drenched in honey, cinnamon, and powdered sugar. One of the healthiest things on the planet for your soul. So that was the conversation before the game with the representatives of the athletic director office, both Janet Diver and Ethel Savis. Miss Savis, one of the chefs for the Greek festival. Some astounding numbers to 100 trays of pasticcio, thousands of grape leaves, This one sent back towards midfield by the Cougars, and it's another breakaway for Notre Dame. This one is number eight taking it all the way in, slowing up. Her shot is going to be just wide. Emma Tucker, the junior midfielder out of Marshfield, on yet another Notre Dame opportunity. Let's take a replay of the shot, just shanking it off of the front of her foot. And Brockton can only escape so much before something falls for the Cougars. My predictive nature thinks it's going to be a fluky goal that gets past Tori Viola Lothary. Pops him up, Shaw trying to chase it down. We have a whistle and a penalty against Catherine Shaw. Mathelia to send this one back across midfield. She finds Kayla Murphy. Shot trying to find Bertarelli unsuccessful. Avery McNiff sending this one ahead for Shaw on sides. Catherine Shaw in the corner running out of real estate. Her cross into the middle. A shot and a diving save, and it's off the fingertips, off the post, and in for the Notre Dame Cougars. The goal. Should be credited to Catherine Shaw, who sent it off of the outstretched arms of Tori Viola Lothary, who deflected it, but not enough as it hit the far post and trickled in. And I consider that a fluke goal. Not saying I was right, but I was right. So Brockton playing from behind for the second straight game. Emma Tucker credited with an assist on Shaw's goal. Brockton, of course, coming off a four to nothing loss against the Oliver Ames Tigers.
free kick just outside the goalie's box here. Hendrigan taking it, sending it short, picked up by Haley Roberts, and the Cougars escape the boxer's best opportunity of the night. 15 minutes to go, one nothing Notre Dame over the Brockton boxers. Killa Murphy struggling to find her footing in the middle of the field, sending this one fairly weakly in on Roberts, who makes the easy save. Now this is Tucker looking to add a marker of her own. She's got to get around two boxers. She sends it in, and it's picked up by Viola Lothery. one will trickle all the way through by well, the senior goalkeeper of the boxers sending it back towards midfield. Now Shaw again. The thorn in the side of the boxers through the first half. And it's going to be offsides against Emma Tucker of the Cougars. Brockton will send it back the other way. Danelle Davids getting ready to come back into the game for the boxers. She stands alongside Corinne Cronin, a junior midfielder out of Pembroke for Notre Dame. Olivia Shaw sending this one out of bounds. Notre Dame thrown deep in boxer territory. Boxers with a little bit of space to work with, sending it forward not quite far enough, intended for Alicia Tokman. Penalty against the boxers, free kick about 11 yards inside of midfield. This one deflected by number 11, Danelle Davids, in where it's picked up by Viola Lothery. <laughs> Tokman sending this one on Roberts, who immediately sends it back towards midfield. Now Shaw to McNiff. McNiff. McNiff, excuse me, deflecting it to number 18, who's in on yet another Cougar breakaway. A shot by Emma Tucker goes wide once again. Metelli are sending this one behind her back, back across the field. Ten minutes to go in the first half. One nothing. Notre Dame Cougars leading the Brockton Boxers. Yeah, 
Megan Ortendahl back into the game for Brockton. Feel a lot three. Sending this one to Ortendahl. Ortendahl deflecting it for number three, Lena Marion. Serena De Silva and Kayla Murphy fighting for it. De Silva to Hendrigan. Hendrigan trying to create some space to get a clean shot off. She does, and it is easily caught by Haley Roberts. Another opportunity for the Cougars, and this one's going to be picked up by Viola Lothary with three Cougars swarming the net. <laughs> Shannon Lavangie now. Forcing the ball out of bounds off of Danelle Davids. The Lothry coming out of the net to grab this one. 7.20 left in the first half. A little bit of a shank by the old Lothry. Finds its way out of bounds. Notre Dame throwing deep in boxer territory. Emma Hines sending this one out of bounds off of one of the boxers. Cross to the middle deflected by number 16 and she sends it on that but it was deflected by Corinne Cronin up to her knee and then square in the face. Six minutes to go now in the first half. One nothing, Notre Dame leading the Brockton Boxers. <laughs> Murphy popping it intended for Hendrigan unsuccessful. Yet instead finds Shannon Lavangi of the Cougars. This one sent into the stands. Brockton throwing. It'll be Orton Dahl to take it. Now it's Emma Tucker in yet again for the Cougars. 
towards the middle of the field, slowing up her shot off the football upright and to the top of the soccer net out of bounds. So Tucker's had numerous opportunities in this first half. A couple of them fired wide, and this one fired high. So we take a look at the replay of that. Emma Tucker slowing up three Brockton boxers around her and just popping it up, able to find the direction of the net, but not quite the height. Quick reminder, the scoreboard, the unofficial time, will stop with two minutes remaining in the half. We here at the Mad Dog Research Team try to do our best to gauge how much of that two minutes is left. We've got about a 13 and a half second margin for error. Official time is kept on the field by the referees. Anna Bertarelli back into the game for Notre Dame. Gordon Dahl sending this one into the Brockton bench. Misplay by Lena Marion, the freshman midfielder, getting some early season game action. Notre Dame taking over on downs with 2.15 to go. And yet another opportunity for Emma Tucker is going to be popped away by Tori Viola Lothery. And we have hit the two minute mark in the first half. Official time kept on the field by the referees. We do have a stopwatch going. I would imagine it'll get somewhere in the two and a half minute range. Shit, Tokeman coming into the game for Brockton. Almost getting a little bit of a break. About a minute left in the half. Somewhere in the range of 30 seconds left in the first half. Notre Dame leading one to nothing. Brockton trying to create something last minute. On a Bertarelli sending this one out of bounds off of one of the boxers with about, call it 15 seconds left in the first half. If either team has a scoring opportunity, the referees are not allowed to stop play. As Notre Dame just did, Viola Lothary 
picking that one up. This one sent all the way ahead where it is picked up by the senior goalkeeper. The whistles blow in two minutes and 31 seconds after the clock stopped. We find ourselves at the end of the first half. The score, Notre Dame Cougars won. The Brockton Boxers nothing. We're going to step aside and take a short break and bring you second half action right after this. Green. <laughs> <laughs> Red hat. Oops. <laughs> Red shirt. Blue shirt. Yellow shirt. Oops. <laughs> Yellow pants. Red pants. Green pants. Oops. <laughs> morning. Hope you all had a good weekend and are ready to be inspired. One quick thing I want to remind you guys to be studying. Major key alert. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Today we're talking about inspirational quotes. You want to get that paper? You better turn in that paper and get an A+. Plus. That's a major key. Another one. Another. Mogul talk. You want to reach the mountaintop? You got to go hard. To succeed, you have to believe. Stay focused, fly higher than the eagle. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Louise, Louise, can you give me an example of an inspirational quote from recent history? Don't play yourself. The key is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at getschool.com. Get caught buzz driving, and you could do some hard time. Craig, knock it off. Sorry, Mom. It could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And that could set you back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Here's your check. You, you got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. No. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Ages. Welcome back into Marciano Stadium for second half action between the Notre Dame Cougars and the Brockton Boxers. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson bringing you all the action from the Peter Farley Press Box here at Marciano Stadium. The score is as follows. The Notre Dame Cougars won. The Brockton Boxers nothing. The lone goal scored by Catherine Shaw, assisted by Emma Tucker. Free kick for the Cougars. It's going to be taken by Maggie Lofnane from 25-yard line, which makes it about 35, 36 yards out from the goal. Free kick finds a hole, and it's going to be deflected off the post. It's still loose. And whistle blows. I believe it's going to be offsides against Notre Dame. So Brockton quite literally escaping again. 
The initial shot hit the post. If that went in, I think it would have counted. The offsides occurred after that. Now it's Catherine Shaw again pressuring the Brockton boxers. Whistle and a stoppage, a penalty against the boxers. So this one is going to be a free kick for the Cougars from about, we'll call that 25 yards out with the angle and all. It's going to be taken by Loft Nain. Sending it directly in and picked up by Viola Lothery. Can you send up two waters? It's best opportunity of the night that has not been converted for the Notre Dame Cougars. A free kick that found the post and then an offsides after... So the score remains one to nothing. Notre Dame on top of the Brockton boxers. Again, Brockton missing Janae Domenici Silva, who has a sprained ankle. It's a big loss for the boxers, the senior captain. Only expected to miss one game. And in talking with head coach Denise Glennon before the game, I likened it to, well, look at what the Giants were able to do without Odell Beckham Jr., who has a sprained ankle. And she said, oh, I know I'm a big Giants fan. So that is how we learned it. Now an opportunity for Catherine Shaw broken up, but Brockton still has not escaped. And Viola Lothary with another good save. So Brockton playing with fire in the second half, but the score remains 1-0 Notre Dame. And this one sent all the way in. Bill Lothry able to deflect it up off the post and out of bounds. It'll be a corner kick for the Cougars. We're going to take a look at the replay on that. Direct shot deflected by Villa Lothary up and out of bounds. Excellent opportunity for Annie Pine, the junior defenseman. This one loose out in front. Notre Dame with an opportunity, a shot, and an excellent save by Viola Lothary. Emma Tucker with the corner kick. So Brockton in dire straits early in this second half. The Notre Dame Cougars have had at least four excellent opportunities early in this half. The boys soccer team just joined the crowd here at Marciano Stadium. Notre Dame with another opportunity. Tucker out in front can't control the pass.
Now an opportunity again for Emma Tucker and the Cougars. Tucker has been in the boxes offensive zone all night and this one saved by Viola Law three and a shot from about 30 yards out. This one and deflected away by Viola Law 3. And another highlight reel save for the boxer senior goaltender. We're gonna take a look at that replay. Who else but Emma Tucker with the breakaway shot and Viola Law 3 able to dive and with the arms outstretched making yet another save and we'll have another corner kick for the Notre Dame Cougars. Tucker sending this one in. And a shot is going to be deflected off of the leg of Danelle Davids and back out of play. Throw in for the Cougars. Brockton has got to get some opportunities offensively if they should hope to win this game. Had only a few early on in this game. Other than that, the ball has been on the boxer's defensive side of the field. Mind you, the Brockton Boxer football home opener here at Marciano Stadium this coming Friday night. If not for the football and the marching band, come to see the BCA crew. We have got a stacked, a stacked crew Friday night. Not only at the helm will be Paul Mandeville. We're also going to be joined by the likes of Big Game Miles Jackson and the seven time award winning director, producer, and Emmy nominated Nubi Rateau. The crowd coming alive here at Marciano a little bit. Ten minutes into the second half, still one nothing. Not for lack of opportunities for the Notre Dame Cougars. It could easily be four or five goals in their favor at this point, if not for the outstanding, outstanding goaltending of Tori Viola Lothry. And now Brockton with an opportunity, should they be able to keep it in bounds, they are not able to do so. But. Sending it out of bounds off of Notre Dame. And we're gonna have the first boxer corner kick of the game. I'm not sure about that one. I think it was just running out of room and the ref was 30, about 35 yards downfield when he made the call. But we're gonna have a corner kick for the Brockton boxers here. Taken by Madison Hendrigan. She sends it in. And it's immediately deflected out by the staunch defense of the Cougars. Haley Roberts, the sophomore goaltender out of Marshfield, has done an excellent job on the few times she's been tested thus far. And now Notre Dame with a 3-on-0 up turf. It's Tucker Shaw. And Lavangie yet again for Notre Dame. Bertarelli joining the mix. And now Tucker out in front. Her shot is going to find the right side, and that's a goal for the Cougars. Three, 
A goal for Emma Tucker assisted by Annie Pine. As Tucker has had the opportunities for the Cougars all night. She could realistically have a hat trick at this point. This one just kind of broke its way through a number of bodies out front. And so the two goals, Emma Tucker's played a hand in both. Assisting on Catherine Shaw, first goal. So we're gonna take a look at the replay of the goal. Tucker right out in front and not out of position, but just a little bit slow to react was Tori Viola Lothery. Now we're gonna have a corner kick for the boxers, taken again by Hendrigan. Hendrigan sending this one in and picked out of thin air by Haley Roberts. Whistle and a stoppage. We have an injury somewhere. Spitting chicklets on the sideline. So we're going to try to see where that injury occurred on the replay. It's right out in front, taking an elbow from Jayla Smith was, I think that's number four of the Cougars. Could be number two, Sarah Weeks, the senior defender. But she took an elbow to the face right out in front on that corner kick. And MIAA rules state, the referees see blood, that player has to come out of the game. So bleeding from the nose is Weeks. Two to nothing, Cougars on top of the boxers. 15 minutes gone in the second half. Opportunity for the boxers, a foot race to the far side. This is number five. Kyla Colors on the far side can't keep it in bounds, and it was Colors' elbow that found the face of Sarah we of Sarah Weeks, the senior defender out of Rockland. Now it's Colors on the far side trying to create some space. Keeping it in bounds very nicely was number three for the boxers. That is Lena Marion. Out of bounds off of Notre Dame, or out of Brockton rather. A couple of substitutions. Number 22, Shannon Levangi, the sophomore forward. Very young team for the Cougars. Count only five seniors on this team. Two of which are not starters. Whereas Brockton, on the other hand, 
also has five seniors, but a junior heavy team. Of course, that group from last year, the super sophomores. There are 10 juniors listed on this roster for the Brockton Boxers, along with two sophomores and two freshmen. Felix, what time was the last goal? Take this opportunity to remind you, Brockton Community Access is on Twitter. That's right, we send tweets from the games. So if you cannot be here, you can still follow along all the action. Such as the two goals scored thus far by the Notre Dame Cougars. You can find us at Brockton Channel. And if you want to talk to us, feel free. We will, if we find your tweet interesting enough, read it on the air. Hashtag BCA Sports. It's quite the time trying to live tweet the game up in Lexington in that joint effort between Lex Media and BCA Sports. This one sent directly in and picked out of thin air by Toria Viola Lothary. Now another Notre Dame opportunity, a shot and a save off the shins of Viola Lothary. And we're going to have a corner kick for the Cougars. We talked about the stacked crew on Friday. We've got quite the crew here at Marciano Stadium tonight as we take a look at this replay. Excellent save by Viola Law 3. We have a crew that is almost entirely staffed by the family of Mike the Postman Simmons. How's that for a stat? A corner kick is sent wide out the other end. It'll find its way out of bounds. In addition to Mike the Postman Simmons, why is he the postman? Because he always delivers. We have his nephew, Trevor, his pseudo-son, stepson, JD, and of course at the helm tonight, we have probably, debatably, the greatest director of all time, Paul Mandeville. And on camera, in addition to Trevor, we've had Jacob Hazel. We call him Young Skywalker, is the intern of Brockton Community Access. And the prolific cinematographer, Aaron Tebow. And you are listening to the sultry, sultry sounds of myself, the Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Really has nothing on Friday's crew. Friday's crew is going to be incredible. In fact, even though I'll be in the Peter Farley press box overlooking the Harry C. Allen track in Armand Colombo Field, I might watch the replay of that game because it's going to be a phenomenal production. Taken down from behind, no whistle for Donnell Davids. Sent back across midfield. Brockton has numbers upfield. This one sent out of bounds into the Brockton bench.
tripping over the ball was Annie Pine. Of course, assisted on the second Notre Dame goal. This is Catherine Shaw, unable to keep it inbounds. But it's out of bounds off of Brockton, so Shaw with the quick throwing. Fast restart for the Cougars. Pine from about 40 yards out, can't filter it through, taken by the defense of the boxers. And now on the sidelines we see Sarah Weeks, in addition to the leaking out of the nose, is favoring her right leg. Yellow Lothary coming out and diving on this one. Weeks is back on the Notre Dame bench, which is a good sign, but limping on her right leg. That's number eight, Emma Tucker, who is having difficulties walking. Tucker, the goal scorer of the second goal, assisting on the first. And with numerous opportunities in the boxers' zone. And Brockton has to capitalize on the loss of Tucker. Sixteen twenty-five left to go in the second half of action here. Notre Dame up two to nothing over the Brockton Boxers. Bigger week for Brockton High next week. As Tuesday night, in addition to being election day here in the city of Brockton, the Lady Boxers soccer team has a divisional matchup against the New Bedford Whalers. Thursday night, the Brockton High boys soccer team is home against the Everett Crimson. Always a good matchup. And Friday night lights here at Marciano Stadium as the Catholic Memorial Knights, part of that vaunted Catholic Conference, come to Marciano to face the Boxers in their second of three home games this year. Fourteen minutes to go now in regulation time. Rockton unable to have any really solid opportunities in the offensive end of the field.
Now Denell David's forced to chase this one down and send it out of bounds past the Notre Dame bench. So if nothing changes, Notre Dame will come away with a win. The boxers will move to 0-2. And my game ball would still absolutely go to Torreyville Lothary. And it is Viola Lothary with a goal kick. Even though if all holds true tonight and the boxers move to 0 and 2, we got to remember something. They started 0 and 3 last year and made a very deep run in the MIAA South Sectional Playoffs. And there's as <laughs> looking very painful Lily Bartlett taking a ball to the face. Off of the leg of Denell Davids. Looking very, very painful. Lily Bartlett immediately spinning around. So we're going to take a look at the replay of that. Bartlett on the right side of your screen, right off of the face. There's something about writing off teams early in the season. The example here. This has got to be the New England Patriots, who I heard a prominent ESPN commentator saying that because they lost to the Kansas City Chiefs on opening night, their chances of a Super Bowl are shot. And that is absolutely the most ludicrous thing I've ever heard. And I think the same rings true for these Brockton boxers. Still trying to find their identity after the loss of their leading scorer from last season. Now Emma Hines down to Bartlett. Bartlett shielding this one out of bounds. It will remain a cougar ball. And an opportunity is broken up by Tori Viola Lothary. Danelle Davids might be hurt. Couple of substitutions to address that for Brockton. It's going to be numbers 23, Lara Cardozo. And number two is a breakaway yet again for the Cougars. A shot and an excellent save by Viola Lothary. Yes! Uh, Lily Bartlett on the latest Cougars opportunity. Sending it straight into the waiting arms of the senior goalkeeper. And hands in the face for Bartlett. Who thought she should have had a goal? Under 10 minutes to go. 9:06 remaining. Two minutes. Uh, two goals, rather. Two goals to none. The score. Notre Dame on top of Brockton. Stoppage time added at the end of this half. Shouldn't be too too much of it. I'll probably gauge about three minutes and 15 seconds. Of course, the clock stops at two minutes, so we have a stopwatch that goes unofficially to try to gauge how much time is left. Wow. 
Free kick for the boxers from about 47, 48 yards out. Trying to send it direct was Ortendahl. Made it about three quarters of the way to the Cougars net. This one headed up and yet another breakaway. This is going to be number 25 for the Cougars. Cutting back to the middle of the field and broken up by Olivia Mathelier. That was Anna Bertarelli on yet another Cougars opportunity. Any Pine sending this one up. No offsides whistled and yet another breakaway in. Oh my God, Tori Viola Lathery reaching out with her right arm, completely outstretched. There were two Cougars and only the goaltender to beat and they couldn't do it as we take a look at this replay. And again, hands on the face for the Notre Dame Cougars is Anna Bertarelli thought she had an empty net and then the fingertips of Tori Viola Lothary got in her way. What a highlight reel for college. Tonight's your night if you are the senior goalkeeper of the Brockton Boxers. As the defense in the midfield has just completely gotten shut down by the Notre Dame Cougars. Five and a half minutes to go now in the second half. The score remains two to nothing. Notre Dame on top of Brockton and yet another breakaway and this one's going to trickle in. Three to nothing with five minutes to go in the second half. This is Anna Bertarelli, number 25, unassisted, getting this one past a charging Tori Viola Lothary. So three goals, three different goal scorers for the Cougars. Catherine Shaw, Emma Tucker, and now Anna Bertarelli. In the So the sophomore forward out of Bridgewater with the latest tally for the Cougars. And that pretty much puts this game away with four minutes to go. Brockton just going to look to get on the board here late. So they have, to this point, not scored this season. Of course, the first game, a four to nothing shutout against the Olive Rams Tigers. Natalia 
with this one and taken away yet again by the Cougars. This one a shot from about 35 yards out, easily handled by senior goalkeeper Tori Vailolothery. Nothing Cougars, two and a half minutes to go now. As official time kept on the field. I'd like to again thank the cast and crew for bringing you tonight's festivities from Marciano Stadium at the helm. Award winning, award winning, one of the best in the business, Paul Mandeville. We also have Mike the Postman Simmons. And JD Winners and Jacob Hazel in the truck. Up top on camera, we have Trevor Dunbar. I think that's his last name. Trevor Dunbar? Simmons? Trevor Simmons, the nephew of Mike the Postman, the prolific cinematographer Aaron Tebow, and myself. The Mad Dog Matt Nelson. About a minute and a half left in game action here as the boxers yet to score a goal this season. Notre Dame dominant from the beginning here in their second game of the season. Notre Dame will move to one and one their first game, a loss to Silver Lake by a score of four to nothing. This one sent ahead as the officials look at their watches. And come out Friday night as the first of three home games for the Brockton Boxers football team here at Marciano Stadium. The Weymouth Wildcats come to town to face the Boxers. We'll be here in Brockton Community Access. This is about maybe 10 seconds left. This one sent back towards midfield. Kayla Murphy unable to handle it cleanly. Taken back by Pine. Popped again and now Pine unable to get a shot on net. Is this one back at midfield on the boxer head? The whistles blow and this one has come to an end. The boxers Moving to 0-2 on the year, suffering a 3 to nothing loss against the Notre Dame Cougars. The three goal scorers for Notre Dame, Catherine Shaw, Emma Tucker, and Anna Bertarelli. And Brockton, again, yet to score a goal on this young season, will look to do so against New Bedford High next week. For everyone here at Brockton Community Access, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, and we will see you next game.